Hi, my name is Methat El Masri. Today's tutorial is about how to use T-SQL with SQL Server. We will use this ERD diagram for our demo. And you can see here that this is a relationship between instructors and courses. Of course, instructors can teach many courses. So you have a one-to-many relationship between instructors and courses. In today's tutorial, we will create the database create the tables, insert data, update data, and use the select statement to retrieve data. For the database server, I will be using SQL Server running in a container. As you can see here, I have Docker desktop running on my machine. So I'm going to use Docker to run my database. If you have SQL Express, you can use that. Or if you have any other SQL Server database, you can use that too. I will use this command from a terminal window to run my SQL Server container. The important things to note here are that the SA password is going to be this. The port number that is going to be used on the host machine is this and the name of the container that I'm giving is azsql. So I'm going to take this command and run it in a terminal window. Here is my terminal window and I'm going to execute this command in there. And you can see that it seems to have started to make sure that it started. I'm going to do this command docker ps and it will tell me that this has started eight seconds ago. Let me run it again. Now it says it started 13 seconds ago. So I know that it has started. Now the next step is to connect to that database and I will be using Azure Data Studio to connect to the database. If you don't have Azure Data Studio installed on your machine, you can download and install it from the site here. I have it on my computer, so I'm going to start it. And this is what it looks like. In order to create a new connection, I can either click on new, new connection, or I can click on new connection here and enter the parameters for a new connection. So my server will be localhost, comma, and that's the port number. Notice that I entered a comma and not a colon. The username is going to be SA, which is the administrator, and the password is going to be the password that I showed you when I run the terminal window command in order to start the container. And that was SQL password exclamation. So I'm going to enter that here. And I'm going to check remember password and connect. If all is well, it should connect. And you can see here, it seems to have connected. We can expand this and see what databases we have. The only databases that we have here are the systems databases. Now we will create our own database and we will call it school. In order to create a database, I need to have a query window. So I'm going to right click on the connection itself and choose new query. And this will give me a query window. The first thing I want to do is create a database called school. And the command for that is pretty simple. It's create database and I'll call it school. And I enter with a semicolon. And if I click on run, it says command completed successfully. So that has executed successfully. Going back to the schema, we want to create a table called instructors and it's got an instructor ID primary key, first name, last name, and email. So the command to do that is we get a new query here and this would be the command to create an instructor's table. First of all, we say use school. So the instructor's table goes into the school database, create table instructors, and we want these to be the columns. The first column is instructor ID. It is of type identity. And that means that the primary key will be auto-generated. It starts at one and it gets incremented by one and it's a primary key. Then we have last name, which would be 50 characters long and not null. The same with first name, also 50 characters. And email is 100 characters. These three columns, we're specifying that they cannot be null. So let us execute this command. I'm going to highlight it and click on run and it says it has executed successfully. Now, if I try to expand the tables node here, it doesn't have anything. So I need to come here and refresh. And when I refresh and expand, you will see that indeed this table has been created and it's got these columns, but it has nothing. If I say select 
top 1000 it's not going to give me anything because there's nothing in the instructors table so what i want to do next is to add some data into this table so i'm going to delete these commands here and add the command that's going to add for me some data this would be the command again we're going to say that we're going to use the school database and we want to insert into the instructors table these columns with these values so this means that i'm going to add five different rows into that table and they are last name first name email and five of these so let me highlight this and click on run and it says it executed successfully now if i right click on instructors and select top 1000 you will see that it did get some data let us update one of these rows so i'm going to update this first row i'm going to change the last name and the first name let's say use school at first so we know which database we're working with and i can say update instructors set first name equals to say liz comma last name equals to day where the instructor id and i want to do it for the first one so instructor id equals to one let us execute this and it says invalid column instructor instructor id there was a typo here we'll try again run and it executed successfully this means that if i check my data the first name has changed to day liz and it was before max tom so we know that it has updated how about we delete sanjo so to delete sanjo we can go use school and delete from instructors where instructor id equals to three and let's put a semicolon here and execute this so it says it has executed successfully now let's check what we've got if we go select 1000 you will see that it goes one two four five which means number three is deleted going back to the schema we created the instructors table but we did not create the courses table note that in the courses table it's got its own primary key but it also has a foreign key into the instructors table so we need to create courses now the command for creating courses is this we're going to create a courses table the course id is the primary key and it is also identity then we have course name 100 characters long course description 1000 characters long the credits is of type decimal and the instructor id is an int and it's a foreign key that references instructor id inside of the instructors table so this is where you set up the relationship between the instructors table and the courses table so let us execute this it executes successfully now if i refresh tables we will see that there are two tables there is the courses table and the instructors table let's insert some data into the courses table but note that in order to insert any data into the courses table it must belong to an instructor so let's try and execute this command here we're, we're going, going to insert into, into the courses table these columns for course name we're going to say comp 3612 course description application development with c sharp credits it will be four credits and for instructor ie it will be two if we look into the instructor's table, the instructor with ID 2 is Faye Ann. Instead of 2, let us make it 22. Now, there is no instructor with ID 22. There is only 1 to 5. So, if we try to insert a record into this courses table and it's got the wrong ID for the foreign key, then you can expect an error. Actually, this is an another problem we should have made this a semicolon let's execute this again and you get another error the error says the insert statement conflicted with the foreign key constraint so and so it means that there is no instructor with id 22 you cannot do this now let us add legitimate data into the courses table 
let's execute this command here. So what I'm doing here is I'm entering 10 rows of data. You can see here that this is one row and I put a comma and another row and so on and so forth. 10 of these. This is with instructor ID 2, this is with instructor ID 5, and all the instructor IDs, they actually exist in the database. Notice that we deleted instructor ID number 3, so we don't have any course that's associated with instructor ID number 3. So let me execute this, and it executes successfully. Now we can see some data in our courses table, and here it is. Let me do a simple select statement on my courses table. So I can do this select star from courses. If I execute this, it will give me the contents of the courses table. But suppose I want, instead of instructor ID in the last column, suppose I want to see the name of the instructor. How can I do that? The name of the instructor comes from the instructor table. Therefore, I need to make a join. So in order to see the instructor names, I may have to do something like this. I'm going to select course name, course description credits, and first name and last name. And this comes from a join that I make with instructors, where I'm giving the instructors table an alias I. So this I is saying, grab the first name and the last name from the instructor's table. And of course, I'm doing a join where the course's instructor ID is equals to the instructor's instructor ID. So now if I execute this, you will see that I get, instead of just an instructor ID, I know the name of the instructor. In this case, it is Anne Fay. She teaches this course and she teaches that course. Suppose I want to know how many courses each instructor is teaching. This is done by using a group by statement. And the group by statement would look like something like this. I'm going to also do a join between the courses table and the instructors table on instructor ID. The courses table, I give it the alias C and the instructors table, I give it an alias I. So I want to pick from the instructor's table the first name, last name also from the instructor's table. Then I want to do a count on course ID from the course table. And I want to group by first name and last name. So if I execute this, it will give me a report that looks like this, which tells me that Liz teaches three courses, Anne teaches two courses, Sue teaches three courses, and Ben teaches Two courses. So if you sum all of these, there are 10 courses and indeed I actually inserted 10 courses into the database. I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you soon in another video.